Thanks All right, Jake. We need to cut this down, Jake. Uh, beautiful day. We're not ready for the inflation quite yet. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let's start there. Uh, hey, JR, yep. JR, be careful with, with that. With what? With this? Yeah, oh, we're okay. We're okay. Hey, welcome to Between the Studs, and I guess you might even say studettes. Mm -hmm. We're Granite Ridge Builders, custom home builders serving northern Indiana, parts of southern Michigan, also northwest Ohio. Each week, we love coming into your home and to talk about our business, construction, new construction. Today we're outside, we're in um, a new area called Canyon Bay. It's located just east of Coldwater Road and on the Gump Road. And I think, Luke, this was your idea. Why did we come outside today? Well, it stopped raining. I was able to get you guys out of the AC, and I wanted to get you guys on the job site. You this, mean yeah. to actually work? Right. Yeah, I'm going to put you to work. <laughs> work, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. So be ready. But All right. uh, this is my home right here. This is, this is where my expertise fall into place. So I wanted okay. to take the opportunity to bring everybody out to Canyon Bay here. We have several job sites under all different phases of construction, and we're just going to walk through it all and kind of go from the ground up. This is fun. Let's build a house. Okay, let's All go right. back to that. Can yeah, I finally cut something out? Can we go? <laughs> Turn that thing off. Okay, you know what, Lonnie? What's fun about our job is everything starts here with the dirt. We have to work and make sure that the water is maintained and the water is shed from the house. Mm -hmm. It all starts with that, doesn't it? And we are concerned about the environment. Environment. We are. Construction management begins on the job site with the dirt. Yeah. We're literally going to look at the dirt to determine the water, you know, the water quality, quantity, particularly on the job site, to make sure that we can shed it away from the new home. And we are very blessed in our part of the country that we have clay soil. Now what do. that means is we can actually put basements in without a lot of problems, isn't that correct? We can, as long as we do the proper drainage system, which is a, t a pretty elaborate tile system under the ground, we can get, get you a basement that you're going to enjoy for you years to shed come. that water. Unlike yeah. places in Florida, Texas that can't put basements in. Water table's too high, they can't yeah. do it. Fort Wayne, Indiana, we have a very blessed uh, area to build in. We're blessed because we have lots of water, but you got to go down to about 150 feet to get it. For the wells, for the wells. Luke, we are out here at Canyon Bay yep. on this gorgeous afternoon. Uh, one of the first things that we do when we start a, a lot and we're going to start building, we kind of get it ready, kind of uh, bench it and prep it. What, 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 what do we do from there? Well, after we bench it, we stake it, which they simply just mark out every corner of the house on the lot. And then okay. from there, we get into the concrete stage. So okay. we trench the footers, we form up the concrete, and then we start what we call our underground mechanicals. Okay. So that's like the plumbing and in some cases the, the heat runs. Do we do something different between a slab and a basement? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like I said, the slab, um, we form it and then we get the plumbing and the heating in there. The basement, you know, we have to bring actually an excavator in as opposed to a trencher and we have to dig it out. Okay. Uh, and then typically the only thing that's in the, pl in the, the plumbing is the only thing that's in the slab itself in the basement. The heat ducts are in the, the ceiling there. So, on this, you talk about the heat ducts. Do we put more heat ducts in the slab or do we put them in the ceiling? I, it honestly depends. Uh, each customer, like this house for example, mm -hmm. the heat runs are in the ceiling. Uh, the house next door, they're in the uh, floor. So uh, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to either if they're in the ceiling or in the, in the floor. Yep. Okay. So one of the last things that we also do on a, a property is pour the driveway and pour the sidewalk. Yep. How do we pr uh, prep for that and what kind of stone stuff do we do for yeah, that? Yeah, well, well you can see right now we're actually standing in a driveway and we're, we're standing on stone. This is a temporary construction mm -hmm. drive is what we call it. We have several inches of stone and then when the time comes to actually pour the drive, we usually like to do it towards the tail end. That way the drive's protected throughout the process. Uh, then we pour four inches, at least four inches, in, in some of the areas down by the curb is five to six inches of concrete on top of the stone base. Okay. And then we broom that as opposed to troweling that. So, Exterior, they broom the concrete, giving it a little bit of extra grip, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Indoors, we trowel everything out nice and smooth. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit too about a, a two-car garage compared to a three-car garage, and how do we do that on the driveway side? Yeah, so uh, as you can see, we got a three-car garage here. So imagine the area to my right just wouldn't be here. Uh, the two-car garage, the, the overhead door is 16 feet wide. Okay. We usually go when we pour our driveways, and we pour it to the edge of the trim. So it mm -hmm. ends up being about 16 six. 
Whereas the third car, when you put that in, we actually have what's kind of a, a hump that has to all tie down to the sidewalk and gives you that nice flair to the third car garage. Awesome. Make it easier for people to get in and out on that third bay. Yep. Make it very nice and smooth. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic. Granite Ridge Builders has hundreds of floor plans to choose from, all of which you can custom design to accommodate your personal needs. But what if you have your own plan or ideas? That's okay! Our three professional on-site draftsmen are ready to take your ideas and turn them into a reality. Just give us a call or shoot us an email. We look forward to meeting with you to custom design your next dream home. Kayla, we've gone from cellars to basements, and now we call them lower levels. We do. Look at the difference with these long daylight windows. Now, some houses, you can have um, daylight windows like this. Some you can't. We'd love to talk to you about um, what options you have for your lot. And these are great because it is an escape, too, in case there's an emergency. Now, what can you do here with this ledge? Well, you can have some nice wood trim there. Another thing you could do to um, play up the bottom part here is have some nice wainscoting. It can be a setting to go around your whole room, even. Okay, look, another part of the basement when we talk about concrete is the wing wall. Could you explain what this is exactly? Yeah, absolutely. So right here, like you mentioned, it's a wing wall or sometimes it's called a retaining wall. Okay. So we have to put these in every once in a while. As you can see, this basement has got nice big daylight mm -hmm. windows in the back. Mm -hmm. And then next door, we got a slab that's got a nice rear covered porch. Well, there's a lot of great difference between that rear covered porch and the grade we're standing right. on. So somehow we have to retain that grade, and that's what this wall consists of. So it's not a maintenance nightmare, and it's not always washing out. Now, Elizabeth, the first thing that we pick out before anything else is the window color. Um, what kind of colors are popular now? Well, obviously we have white here, which is classic. There's the browns, which we call bronze or sea and stone, but we have some new ones too, right? We do. So um, we, we just introduced black, which is really popular, um, as well as you could do red. And um, honestly, you can do just about any color out there. They can custom do all of them. And I know you said they select these first. For example, this home is in mechanical stage, second mechanicals. So it's been framed, and now they're working on the rough plumbing and the heating and cooling and these were actually selected several weeks ago. They were. Now, Tony, I have a question. We're not sure what's going on around the window. What's going on around the windows is we're really trying to seal up the envelope of the house. So yeah, as you see here, we have a house wrap, and mm -hmm. then we make sure we tape all the edges around the windows as well. What that does is that helps keep moisture out, and it just helps seal that whole house up a little bit more. Now, why don't we have the, any concrete down here? Well, because when you're doing a house, when you have concrete down there, that's setting up your foundation for brick. Okay. But when you're doing a stone, you can actually just hang it along the side. You put a mesh there, and it's almost like a ceramic tile that you can just put up right against the envelope of the house. Perfect. This is going to have a manufactured stone, and then it's also going to have some vinyl siding, correct? Correct. Now we have just passed the framing stage and we are into what now? Mechanical stage, correct? We call it, Izzy, the mechanical stage, which means the home has been framed, windows and doors and the roof have been installed. Mm -hmm. And now the mechanical people, the plumber, the heating people, the HVAC as we call them, and the electrician and the audio video people are in here working, installing their materials. And with ours, uh, we know high energy efficiency is something that we, you know, we built our name on. Um, we talk about two by four construction versus two by six construction. Right, right. We get a lot of inquiries about two by six walls. Basically, they cost 90 cents more per square foot to put to install a, a two by six wall. Um, the question is insulation. Yes, you get a little more insulation, but in our research, it takes at least 10 to 12 years to make that payback. So it may be something you want to, you maybe want to spend your money somewhere else. And it does uh, have a lot of effects in that house too. It does. It takes a couple inches out of the room. It affects your door jams, your window jams as well. So you have to take these considerations, you know, make these considerations. Now I've had a lot of clients uh, comment about our finger jointed studs, right. a little bit of concern about it, but actually it's one of the best things we can do for a house, isn't it? You're right. It reduces cupping and also twisting that what a normal typical stud would, would do, would be susceptible to doing, which means we can reduce drywall pops, particularly by going to the finger jointed stud, stud which is also more energy friendly. We can use smaller particles of wood. 
Mm -hmm. By the way, the fireplace is uh, going to give us a show here. Yeah. Uh, this is a direct vent fireplace, which means it, it has ventilation from the inside to the outside. And one of the new codes is on a direct vent fireplace, you have a glass enclosure. It's enclosed. Mm -hmm. But now we have to put this screen in front of the glass. Absolutely. And we, we've been talking again about what's been going on past this framing stage. What are we going to do specially for these cans and things like that here as well? First of all, is the Granite Ridge uses a insulated can. Mm -hmm. That's very important because they're up in the attic where there's cold mm -hmm. and then we've got the warm air coming up and it'll, there'll, be, there'll be a lot of condensation or moisture building up on these cans. So we do use an insulated can. Very critical in the construction process. And we talk a lot about green building as well, and I've noticed that this bottom board here is green, but that's not what we mean by green construction. Correct? No, that is a treated perimeter plate. It's, uh, it stands up really well against moisture and also keeps the bugs out to some degree. And when you're looking at a window here, I did notice that there's a little bit of space outside of the window here. Right, you're right, that's a little bit of a gap, and we're going to use a urethane foam around this window to make sure we seal it off properly. And if you use, we use the closed cell foam. Closed cell, polyurethane, What happens right. if you would use the wrong kind and use an open cell? It's going to expand, and if you ever had a problem getting a window open, it might be you use, you use the wrong foam. And these windows here are double hung windows. Right. Tilt wash or double hung as they call them. Uh-huh. Very efficient. That's an Anderson high performance window, low E argon. Critical in the on the energy side of things to use a good window. And it comes standard with Granite Ridge. It's a standard Granite Ridge home. You're right. Also, I want to make one other uh, point. Um, when it comes to framing, it's very critical how you seal the perimeter plate. Absolutely. Granite Ridge has like a three-step process. Mm -hmm. There is a bead of blackjack underneath the plate. Then there's a seal sealer. It's kind of a foam stuff that lays between the concrete and the plate. And then you'll notice the blackjack that another bead of blackjack along the, the, along the perimeter there. Critical, because we're going to do an, a, an, air, an air test, a blower door test, when this home is finished. We want to make sure that there isn't air infiltration and leakage, particularly at the plate. It's all about making something high energy efficiency and it's standard for all of our Granite Ridge homes. Ridge Builders, Northeast Indiana's number one villa builder is excited about all these opportunities we have for you as it relates to villas. We have lots starting from 32.9 located southwest, northwest, and northeast. We also have villas from the 160s right on up. We have move-in ready villas starting at 199.9. We would also love to sit down with you and design that particular floor plan that's going to meet your needs. Give us a call today or visit our website. We'd love to talk to you. Now we're going to talk a little bit about setting up your home or staging your home. Sounds good. So one of the first tips that I want to um, start with is how to rearrange furniture in a great room. One of the biggest things you don't want to do in a great room is angle the sofa, especially when you're staging the house. It'll make the room look very small. Um, it, it might be a good idea for a family room environment when you're already living there, but for, for open house and staging, okay. you really want to um, have it on a straight wall. So if you guys can move this over here for us, sorry. Another good consideration is the scale of your furniture. You want to make sure the size is right for the room. Exactly. So if you can tell here, just by them moving it on um, a straight wall, it really opens up the room and makes it look twice as big. They're going to put some end tables down on the sides here. Um, we'd like to have lamps on there, but did we remember an outlet for those? We did. We remember the outlet, Kayla, because we want to light up your life. Perfect. Well, that sounds great. So then we can plug those into the floor outlet. Always a great idea to have a rug. If you do have a floor outlet, can kind of hide some things there and, um, and make the setup a little bit better. And the rug adds a little bit of color, too. If your furniture is more neutral, this is a good piece to bring in a little more interest. That looks good, guys. We like Perfect. it. All right. So another tip for you is um, hanging artwork. You want to make sure that your scale of artwork is good, especially in a really large great room size. Another idea if you do have smaller pictures is to flank pictures on um, the sides of something like a mirror or something that is a little bit more of the focal point. Now above the fireplace, a lot of times you'll see a TV now or a piece of art. One other option is a mirror. We don't typically recommend a mirror because when you do look at it, all you're going to see is the ceiling reflection in the mirror. Get that. Man, this is a really nice furnace. Yeah, do you remember when they used to be 70% efficient? Now they're all up to 96.2. Yeah, they've come a long way with these. All right, guys, we're down here in the mechanical room in the basement talking about the mechanicals and, and how the house works. 
And one of the things that's really nice about a Grand Ridge home is the furnace that we include standard, and that would be this Bryant 96.2% efficient furnace. Uh, Luke, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that furnace? Yeah, like I said, 96.2, that's, that's huge. You know, like JR mentioned, 70% is what they used to be. That used to be the highest efficiency they can get. Now we're approaching that 96, 97 range. So, and then if you pair this furnace up with the air conditioner that we use on the outside, it takes the air conditioner from a SEER 13 to a SEER 14. And what's, so, what's SEER, Luke? Uh, seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. Perfect. Nice. Yep. So, then, also on the filter, you can see right here we have a four inch media filter. Oh wow. And that's big for people with asthma, uh, people that have pets that, you know, the mm -hmm. pet dandruff. Uh, th that, that's standard, a four inch and, you know, typical people are used to seeing the one inch, like I said, four inch. That really filters out up to uh, a MERV 8 is what we put as standard, but you can buy them at MERV 12 in the 4-inch. Wow. That's yeah. a huge benefit to me. You mentioned allergies and asthma. I have both of those, so I, I really appreciate that. I also appreciate the fresh air intake system that we do as a standard. Would you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Up here in this corner here, this is where the fresh air intake is. So what it is is it that goes straight to the outside. That brings fresh air from the outside into and mixes it with the air that, that is being recirculated inside. Now the question is, well, why would you want to bring outside air? You know, oh, that might be more polluted. Well, no, most houses are actually more polluted in, in the house than it is outside the house. So we're trying to exhaust that stale air and bring in that fresh air. And then also it helps with that, that tightness of the new homes that we have going on right now. This house, it has blue board, everything's taped. It's extremely tight. It's not breathing on its own. So that's why we put the fresh air intake standard in all of our houses. Wow. That, is, that is really nice. Uh, let's also talk about the, the plumbing for this house. So we have the manifold system here. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the manifold system, it uses a PEX line, which is this right here. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is it operates very similar to how I, um, a electric panel works. So okay. every faucet, every toilet, every shower has its own dedicated line that runs to it, hot and cold. Okay. So that way you can isolate and turn off one section, you know, like one faucet in the kitchen. If you happen to have a leak or you just oh, want to wow. change your faucet, you can actually turn that off without having to turn off the water to the entire house. That seems like a really efficient way to do it. Mm -hmm. And Luke, a lot of our viewers may be familiar with the sump pit that's behind you, but not necessarily the pit that you're standing on. Could you explain what that is for us? Yeah, so this and Lonnie and Tony are going to talk about it in the next section, but I want to show you what it looks like installed. So this is actually an indoor grinder pit. Okay. So anytime you have plumbing in the basement, you need to have a grinder pit anyways. Basically what it does is it grinds up the sewer, the sewage, mm -hmm. makes it into more of a slurry and then pumps it up and out. This brings all the plumbing to the basement, it grinds it up, and then pumps it out to the street. Here in Canyon Bay, and this is going to be something that you're going to start seeing more standard in, in newer subdivisions, mm -hmm. that each house has its own grinder pit. So you can either have an indoor one or an outdoor one. I don't want to give too much away because like I said, Tony and Lonnie are going to show you some great examples of what they look like when they're not installed. So that's what this is here in that grinder pit. Wow, that's pretty, that's mm -hmm. pretty impressive. too much furniture in here. Can you take away some yeah, of these let's, chairs? Let's put them back here. I think that'll really help and I'll move this one here. All right. You definitely don't want to get anything too crowded, especially in a nook area that might tend to be a little bit smaller. So spreading out, um, only using the chairs that you'll need for that occasion is a good tip. And this is a large nook, so there is room for a lot of chairs, but for everyday use, you don't really need them. Another good tip is setting up your windows in a nook. We're seeing dining rooms kind of falling by the wayside, but most people still have a piece of furniture they may want to use. So you could add some transom windows so you have windows up high and still have room for that piece of furniture. I love that idea. Another thing to keep in mind is not all of your wood finishes need to match. We have um, an antique white here with stained cabinets. It's a great look to mix things up a little bit so it doesn't get too boring. Okay, you guys, I needed bar stools, but you did not interpret correctly what I needed. No, those don't fit at all. So when we have an island with a bar, we definitely want stools that are a little higher. When you're um, furniture shopping, you can look for bar stools or um, also called counter stools. There's a bit of a difference. So bar stools, if this was raised about 12 inches, that's what you'd want for that. These are considered counter stools, and that's going to be the proper height for, the, for this and application. Another consideration with your stools is do you want to have a back on them? The ones that we show here are hidden and they're not intrusive to the rest of the room. So that's one more consideration. Definitely. And another thing, um, we usually recommend one bar stool about every two foot. So that gives you an idea about how many you'd be looking for. Lonnie, I think we get the dirt.
dirty job here, but here's my question is they made, um, uh, I guess, reference to uh, the uh, grinders. Now, this is an indoor right. one. This is the one that we saw installed. Okay? Right, right. Could you kind of explain what is a grinder? And it's a very new term for a lot of people. Why do I even need one? Okay. Well, we're in an area where the sewer is actually a low pressure line. And so we can't just let our wastewaters flow into that line. We have to push them into the line. And so okay. we're using a grinder okay. system like you see here. And so tell me what this does. This actually helps out the city utilities. Is that my, um, I guess, recollection? It of this? does. We're grinding up all your wastewaters and okay. influence, and they're they're coming into this pump. They're being ground up, and then they're being pushed out as a as a, a liquid into the lines. Okay. So if anybody's ever had a problem, let's say with trees getting in their um, uh, sewers, roots, I guess, and right, roots things right, like that, right. this will probably help that. Because how big help. of a line do we need? Just a two-inch line is all we need, and that replaces. Oh, great big 8-inch, 10-inch, 12-inch, who knows? Yeah, on the gravity side Okay, of so where is right. this going to sit again in the basement? This was going to sit in the basement. The other thing that's really positive about setting them in your basement is you normally have plumbing in your basement. Well, all that plumbing can flow to this as well. So it takes care of your plumbing needs in your basement on the lower level. Liquefies it, gets it out to the city. Right. Now, we're in Canyon Bay. Canyon okay. Bay. Right. And this whole subdivision of about uh, 25 lots is going to be a grinder subdivision. It is. is. I think it might be the first in, uh, at least in uh, our experience in our area, they use them a lot on lakes. It's going to become, it's becoming okay. a very popular option for taking care of wastewater. Show me what you're seeing the next year. This is the outside um, equivalent to the inside equivalent. Okay. And the reason it's so large, Tony, is because this part needs to set under the frost line. That makes sense. So that way you have no problems with freezing and things right. like that, right? Right. Okay, let's go for some costs. Okay. What are we looking at? If we use the inside application, we're looking at around $6,000, and the warranty is also a little bit better. Okay. And remember, we're taking care of the basement, uh, the basement uh, plumbing uh, yeah, that's pictures right. as well. So I don't need a grinder that we would have probably replaced by with a $1,000 grinder down there, maybe. Right, exactly. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is if anybody would like more information about this, Lonnie will be available, I'll be available, and we have a house called The Next Step. Right. And right. we have a carriage barn in the back, and we're setting it up right now to demonstrate. Is that right? True? We're going to have all these kind of pumps and things in that Next Step home in the auxiliary building yeah. so we can inform our clients and the general public about wastewater and how yeah. to take care of it. Mm -hmm. All right, now. I thought Tony Depper was supposed to Tony join us. Tony Depper was supposed to help. Where is where's Tony? He went to, I uh, think he went to the port. Speaking of Tony, speaking of wastewater, he just came from the. What's up, oh, guys? Man. Oh. Everything come out all right, Tony? What? <laughs> Working on your cosmetics? Makeup? What? He is single, you know. Anyway. <laughs> you got problem? toilet paper hanging out your pants for crying out loud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll be back. Pardon me. Another great tip when decorating or accessorizing is using odd numbers. The eye uh, draws more attention to things in odds. For example, what we have here on the mantle, a grouping of three. Exactly, and it doesn't always have to be the same three things either. As you can see here, you can really mix it up a little bit. And Lonnie, if you can bring in um, sure, that plant sure. and finish this off over here. I'll do really it. Really nice yeah. to have a little bit of greenery and life in, in design yeah. too. Yeah. That and looks I, and like I, poison I, ivy. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, hey, I heard you mention odd numbers, and they tell us, the landscapers tell us that we should also use odd numbers when we landscape. Three plants, five shrubs, for example, five trees. Um, I guess that makes sense. Hey, by the way, guys, we're, we're running a little late. We need to make it close. Let's okay. go. Oh, let's go. Well, Joe, what Tony would like for us to discuss is the Rural Housing Finance Program, mm -hmm. which is a terrific way of owning a new home today. It absolutely is, Lonnie. And Joe, as I understand it, you took advantage of yourself a few years ago. Well, that was quite a few years ago. My wife and I took advantage of this program 37 years ago, Lonnie. It's pretty amazing. And believe it or not, you can get into this home with no down payment, zero down, True. minimal closing costs. Well, maybe even zero dollars in closing costs. Even possibly no closing costs and monthly payments from about six fifty dollars per month. True. A lot cheaper than renting. It's a lot cheaper than renting. Why would you rent? I know it. And we're talking about a custom home that you're going to design and we're going to put your appointments in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And How much home am I, can I get for this one? Well, up to 175000 or possibly even more depending on which program you qualify That's for. That's a lot of home. It's wonderful. It's exciting. Call Granite Ridge Builders. 490-1417-260 mm -hmm. area code. Talk to one of our home specialists. They'll give you the information. Take your application. We're going to help you realize that dream. Absolutely. Back, back there. Where? Right here. Yeah, yeah, put it down. There. 
Move. It's crooked. That okay. looks good. Okay. okay, guys, open house. I got a picture. Um, downstairs. Mm, open house in 30 minutes. Garage. Uh, okay, to, there you go. Put it on the island. Please. Ooh, I like it. Uh, fireplace. Here. Yeah, that's fine. That looks good. What else we got? You can move those in here. Okay. Um, right there in the kitchen on the island there. Uh, that goes in the den. This is? Okay. Right. Sorry. <laughs> we're, lo we're, we're looking pretty good, guys. You need help down there? Um, bedroom. Not kitchen. So I'll put that uh, back in the garage. Ooh, no, okay. Don't want that. Not that. Um, down, downstairs. Well, yeah, downstairs. Kitchen? Uh, master. Oh, master. Oh, sorry. I got this new dad. Whatever you think. In here. We'll put it in here. Um, let's put it in the sunroom. All right, guys. I think, I think that should about do it. Should be ready for our open house now. Thank you guys. Looks good. Whew. Wow. Whew. Does that work? You know, yeah. building new homes is a lot of work, but can you tell we enjoy our work? It's actually got a fun side to it, doesn't it? And you know, we plan for a couple months and then what we do out on a lot, uh, dotting the landscape, uh, we hope is going to stand there for over a hundred years. And so we take our business very, very seriously, don't we guys? Yeah, we want to thank you guys for tuning in today and spending part of your day with us. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Visit our website. Uh, even better yet, just stop in the front door. We'd love to meet you. Thank you, guys. How many minutes we got? They should be out walking over the front door. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. All right. But you know, we work for about two months. What happened? And then we go on vacation for 10. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Tony is goosing me. I think he's like doing a dance move or something. Wall art is very important in your home. Having the right scale on your wall. Hold on, hold on. Right, right, right. We don't. Did you, did you miss the wall? Needs repainted. Sorry, Luke. Hey, we're Granite Ridge Builders. And uh, this is part of the Granite Ridge team, including Tony Ranky, our president. And we are custom home builders serving parts of Southern Ohio. <laughs> That's if weird. You, to go there. You, turned me, you turned me down for that one when I submitted it a couple weeks ago. We don't go that far. <laughs> oh. can, we, can we build in Southern Ohio? <laughs> We're Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northwest Indiana. Let's do this again. Okay. <laughs> Bobby, do you know where we build? <laughs> hey, we'll get there, Northwest, now Southwest. <laughs> Holy smoke.